A desolate landscape unlike any other, where scorching heat and strange gases do not favor the living. This place is otherworldly. Um, no. We're still on planet Earth. This is my first volcano, but Jamie, is this, you've been up a volcano before? But with scenery like this, it's easy to forget. We're on Mount Etna, Europe's largest and most active volcano. The defining feature of Italy's largest and most famous island, Sicily. It's a fact. Europe is home to incredible bucket list destinations and experiences. You know, those moments that no life feels complete without. We're trying to find out why people love coming to Athens. Great plan. Okay. I'm Luke, and I'm a professional tour guide from England. I've never say goodbye. No, yeah. I've been showing people around Europe with tour company Expat Explore Travel since early 2019. <laughs> but it's time to leave the land of high tea, little red phone boxes, and Hugh Grant behind and do something a bit different. We asked our travellers for their top bucket list destinations and experiences, and I'll be discovering what it is that makes them so popular. Joining me is fellow explorer and Australian cameraman, Jamie. When he heard what we were doing, he didn't take much convincing. And together, we're hitting the road to explore what it is that defines a bucket list destination. We'll see the iconic sites, but also venture off the beaten track. We're on a mission to discover some of Europe's biggest and best when it comes to travel experiences, and then go deeper. Are you ready? Let's go behind the bucket list. Ah, Sicily, an island that's known true hardship, both geological and cultural. From countless volcanic eruptions to its fair share of invasions, the Greeks, Carthaginians, and Arabs, to name a few. To starvation due to agricultural failure, resulting in mass emigration, and the rise of the Mafia in the 19th century, bringing with it huge amounts of oppression. Yet, despite all this, Sicilians have shown tremendous resilience, and in doing so, leave us with incredible tales of triumph and resolve, told through the amazing experiences available here. No wonder Sicily is at the top of so many people's bucket lists. I'm eager to learn more about life here in Sicily, the stories, and of course, the food. Jamie, this is for you, my friend. Where better to start our Sicilian adventure than its major port and gateway to the rest of the world, Catania. The city has a population of around 300,000 and lies under the shadow of Mount Etna. Etna is ever present and has to a large extent shaped both the history and actual existence of Catania. Devastating the city several times with its enormous eruptions. The most violent of which was in 1669, during which lava flooded the whole of the city, killing 12,000 people. Yet it's often in the face of adversity that the magic of resilience shines through. This is a city that bounced back from disaster. And despite the ongoing threat of the smoldering beast to its north, it's truly thriving. And there's one place in particular where this is felt most. It's legendary fish markets. Ah, un poco fra due due euro. Quante? Grazie mille. Quattro euro. Quattro. Tieni, è questo in più, sempre quattro euro. Grazie, ciao. Grazie, thank you. Uno euro tutti. Solo uno euro. Grazie mille. A huge amount of variety on all the stalls here, and an amazing energy to the place. People aren't just buying it for cooking. There are people eating raw fish in the streets, and we've been thrust upon us some of the fish here as well as a massive bunch of coriander. Responsible for over 20% of Italy's entire fish trade, it's no wonder it's home to one of its most famous fish markets. The market is as old as Catania itself and is considered by many as the beating heart of the city. The fish market, also known as the Pescheria in Italian, is just behind the Baroque Aminano fountain on the edge of Piazza del Duomo. So here are the little guys here. Some of them have been decapitated, some of them not. Uh, and yeah, we'll have to talk to Jamie about how they taste, but they smell delicious. As you know, I'm allergic. Why am I doing this? Because you love new experience. Oh, yes. <laughs> no trip to Sicily is complete without sampling at least some of its fishy delights. So no fish for me, 
but there's another Sicilian delicacy that I've been desperate to try. Arancini is famous all across Italy, but a lot of people don't realize it's actually a Sicilian creation. The Supli version is the Rome version, but the Arancini is iconic here in Sicily, and this is the best Arancini I have ever had. It's rice in a ball with a coned end as a tribute to Etna, covered with breadcrumbs and deep mm. fried. Incredible. I'm going to say, I know we're meant to be avoiding this, but I want you to take a bite as well, Jamie. I'll tear you a bit off because this is phenomenal. Well, this is, this is like, this looks like the ultimate, almost, I, I couldn't even eat it because it looks so well presented, you know? Yeah. It's even on the gold plate. And the <laughs> little green mountain. And uh, inside it's a pistachio and speck, but outside we have a double, double pistachio. Wow. And you can, you can eat pistachio every bite. Whilst this game-changing bit of food made its way to my stomach, it hit me just how amazing it is that this huge and vibrant city continues to thrive despite the ever-present threat of the volcano. But it turns out not only have the Sicilians thrived in the face of this ecological threat, some are also using it to their advantage, especially when it comes to wine. There are 19 regions producing wine in Italy, yet Sicily accounts for 15% of the country's total production. This is a big deal. Its diverse microclimates, varied growing environments, and a wealth of indigenous grapes have caught the attention of the world. We want to know more about Etna's role in this, so we're meeting the brothers of the Mondifesso Winery on the foothills of Etna to find out more. That's, what's amazing about this, uh, obviously people who come to enjoy your wines, to sample them, to be able to see the original process. Yeah. There was, uh, I mean, the distinction between, of course, white and red wine, yes. because, you know, the white uh, does not need to be pressurized, so you just uh, squeeze the, the grapes and uh, the liquid goes inside. Mm. Whereas the, the red wine will, uh, will, will be processed with the, with the press. Yeah. To, to get also the, you know, the, the tannins, we call it the tannini, we call it in Italian. Yeah, we say it's tannins. Tannins, yeah. yeah. And what, what would you say sets maybe Sicilian apart from Italian wine? Sicilian, uh, you, have, you have to distinguish because Sicilian wine, uh, if you think about Etna, yes. uh, you have a, a completely different climate and uh, sure. uh, microclimate climate that uh, differentiate from 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 the other wines you got from the other part for, uh, of Sicily meaning uh Cerasolo di Vittoria, or mm -hmm. the other the other wine you got from uh, from Trapani or Marsala, like Corvo or yeah. uh, Salaparuta, or because the the, the grapes uh, here also also the the harvest uh, season is completely different. Mm -hmm. Here you, wow. here we are in the Etna Dock, as uh -huh. also you see in Milo, Zafferana, mm -hmm. Tre Castagni. Here we are in Pedara. And so this grape has been in your family for uh, multiple generations, then. The uncle of my of my father uh, uh, actually uh, uh, received it uh, and I bought it, and, uh, and then my father actually renovate, replant. So the wine here isn't just unique to the rest of Italy. This is unique to Sicily as well. Exactly. Compared to other yeah. Sicilian wines. That's what I want to say. Yeah, Amazing. exactly. You got it. Uh, it was experience because when you when you go skiing on the top of the Etna, you mm -hmm. see the the sea in in front of you wow. going down, and uh, yeah, and you have uh, you know uh, winter condition on the top, and then you go backwards to the to the big town in Catania, and uh -huh. you get warm weather. So you can have sun by the sea, and then 45 minutes beyond that, you're yeah. you're skiing down a volcano, but with snow, yeah. and in between the two, you have the wine. <laughs> You must come here and try the unique flavors of the Mondifesso Winery in the foothills of Mount Etna. I haven't tasted wine like it before, and for a truly Sicilian experience, we hope you'll come and join us here soon. With a salute and a ciao, plus a surprise little homemade nocciolino hazelnut liqueur made by the guy's mother, it was finally time to take my slightly merry self up the mighty Etna. But don't worry, Jamie's driving. And my God, what a drastic change in scenery. The mighty Etna can be seen from all around this part of the island, whether Catania to the south or Messina to the north. It can even be seen from Calabria over on mainland Italy. Etna is what we call a stratovolcano, 
meaning it's a conical volcano built up by many layers of hardened lava, pumice and ash, giving visitors the rare opportunity to literally hike up lava. Oh wow, so didn't know what to expect when we came up here. But looking up to the top of the volcano, this is definitely some sort of magma river, so solidified lava here. This is incredible. We're only a few minutes from the station, and this is a very new experience for me. Last major eruptions, 1986, 1999. This is pure epicity at its best. I just made that word up. Is that a real word? <laughs> Now, when it comes to hiking, there are plenty of trails ranging from easygoing to the more extreme. Or if you're feeling a bit lazier, you can even take the cable car followed by a specially adapted bus that looks like something out of Moonraker to get you to the top. And with this lunar landscape, you really do have to remind yourself you're still on Earth. You can see in here, these poor souls, classic solidified lava that's cooled down. This would have once been flowing all the way down these craters, bursting out of them. Hopefully we can find some bigger bits as we go up. Ooh. During our volcanic explorations, we met some fellow explorers who were happy to talk to us about why they were here. Well, first because uh, it's quite warm and yes. we're in autumn and it's still so lovely weather and enjoy the sun and everything. And, and after that for the, yeah, the nature. Nature the volcano. is wonderful. The, the landscape, the scenery is just amazing. Mm. We went to the Aeolian Islands. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And nature is so wild. The, the volcanoes also are amazing. Is it your first time to Sicily? Yeah, yeah first yeah, time. Yeah. Oh, but okay. not in Italy, but in Sicily, yes. yes. Would you say it lives up to your expectation? Or? Really? Yes. Really, like we really have a good time here. The food is amazing. Yes. The yes. Oh too. But, uh, in this direction. Yeah. And after you have just like this. Oh. This, uh, this could you, down, could you, go, down? Name? Could you yes. go down like this and you go just run. So it's no big secret that I'm easily excited at most things. And upon seeing that huge crater nearby, I just had to run to the top. Partly for the view, but also for the new experience of running up a giant mound of lava and ash. It's harder than you might think though. However, coming back down was great fun. When it comes to views of Etna, there are so many great spots, but there's one that steals the show, and that's from the popular coastal town of Taormina, home to one of Sicily's most iconic ruins, the Greek theater of Taormina. The Greek theater here at Taormina is a huge reference to the Greek heritage of Sicily. Not only that though, there are those that believe it's actually of Roman origin, which again is testament to the huge cultural mix of the history of the island. Not only the theater though, in the distance, we have perfect views of the summit of Mount Etna. We have the Bay of Naxos, as well as part of the Messina Strait in the distance. I knew the ancient history of this place was going to be incredible, but I didn't realize that they still had performances today. Having seen the seat numbers here and spoken to the staff, the performances that happen throughout the year take place in this ancient setting, giving you an incredible feel for how it would have once been used. This morning at the fish market, we found this amazing little place called the Shiroko Fish Lab. But as we were here so early, it was a bit too early for us to get some food. So we thought we'd come back this evening to try it out. But how long have you guys been here? How long has this been here? The fish lab? Five years. Five years? Mm. Four. Four, okay. Oh my God, they look incredible. So I'm gonna go straight in, it's really hot. So I'm just gonna have a little dip. Mm. Incredible, man. The head just exploded in my mouth. And the flavor is insane. When it comes to the Greeks, it's not just theater and entertainment that they brought to Sicily. They also brought their religion. 
And we know how dedicated they were to honoring their gods with their many awe-inspiring column temples. One of the most well-preserved examples of this here on Sicily is the Valley of the Temples in Agrigento. 6.30 in the morning, we're getting some sneaky shots of the Valley of the Temples, Temple della Concordia behind us over here. As the name suggests, there's literally a valley full of various Greek temples. To find a Greek structure this well-preserved is truly amazing. Sicily seems to have been attracting people from all over the world for two and a half millennia. And with its booming tourism industry, it still does today. Although the tourists are much more welcome than invading civilizations. But what was it that made it so desirable to these invaders? It's perfect agricultural conditions. Possible un melon? Bene. Perfetto. Grazie mille. Oh my God. Excuse me. <laughs> The softest, juiciest apple I, I may have ever tasted. Partly contextual because of where we are, but also I wish you could taste it. Jamie, I'll give you a bite, but it might be a bit weird, but I know you've got a banana in your pocket, so it's all good. <laughs> but then there's the legendary Sicilian lemons. Facciamo un documentario di turismo. Okay. A whopping 90% of Italy's lemons come from the island. So it's no wonder it's also home to some of the world's best limoncello. And after all our exploring, I'm definitely ready for a drink. Oh, wow. Okay, this is incredible. So how do they make this tasty treat? You take the peel of a washed lemon, soak it in grain alcohol for a month, then add water and sugar, store for another month in a dark room, and incredible. I have heard that Sicilian lemons are the best lemons yes. in the world. Yes, is the, this true? the sun and the fly mm. are much mineral, it's uh, nice. And um, mm. the 17% um, of acid in the world, the lemon. Oh, okay? wow. Yes, okay. the lemon in Italy is a 50% mm -hmm. lemon from Sicily, that's 17% acid. So if anyone is going to visit Sicily, I think it's very important. They have experienced the lemons, yes. but maybe especially the limoncello. Yes. Okay, so I have to ask you about this. Ah, the legendary cannoli of Italy. A perfect accompaniment to this lemony treat. Jamie, this is for you, my friend. You've been working very hard. In, uh, in my shop, mm -hmm. um, uh, in this negozio, oltre a poter comprare i prodotti, potete sì. fare anche un'ampia degustazione del prodotto che volete comprare. Mm -hmm. eh, ma abbiamo anche la possibilità di fare degli ottimi aperitivi con i nostri tipici salumi, salami e mm. formaggi. Sì. Eh, poter anche servire dei vini liquorosi come il moscato di Siracusa, del Marsala. Mm. Possiamo fare degli aperitivi con il lemon spritz che mm -hmm. è un, un aperitivo che inizialmente nasce come il classico Aperol Spritz mm. e, ma noi riusciamo a farlo anche con il limone di Siracusa con il limoncello di Siracusa facciamo l'Aperol Spritz in versione con limone mm. e potete venire tutti i pomeriggi per poter fare un ampio aperitivo Thank you so much. Thank you for you. For, for the education, for the time. And I think you were the perfect person and Thank the perfect you. place to come and learn about these things. <laughs> Thank you. <Well. laughs> um, come on in my shop for the drink, typical drink from Sicily, from Syracuse. Natural, no color, only from Syracuse, only from the little island of Sicily. We came expecting only to try limoncello, but that classic Sicilian family hospitality meant we were in for a lot more more than just that. So much so, we were almost late for our next experience. We were just trying some of the famous limoncello and they said we have to come here to speak to, to you and it looks like you have something very special here. Questi sono tipici biscotti siciliani. Usiamo la mandorla di avola, che è vicino a Siracusa. È un impasto di mandorla, zucchero e uovo. Solo questo. Sono i più famosi dolcini del nostro territorio mm. di Siracusa. Questa è la tipica cassata siciliana. Questa è bellissima. Bellissima. Sì, bellissima. E buonissima. Mi bellissima e buonissima. Abbiamo del pan di spagna, mm. la ricotta, mm. marzapane. Sì. E questo è tutto zucchero. Mm -hmm. E il frutto candito. Mm -hmm. 
Oh my god. It's incredible. Very sweet. The combination, the, um, the ricotta and the marzipan is delicious. This is the typical cappuccino italiano. Mm. Italiano. Ma il cappuccino solo mattina o tutto il giorno? Tutto il giorno. Tutto il giorno. Tutto il giorno. Mm. Invading civilizations, ecological threats, we've seen some of the hardships of the past that have helped shape the Sicily of today. But there's a much more recent one that has led to widespread oppression, corruption and even death for some. It's the Mafia. Although what we're more interested in is the rapidly growing revolution and we're meeting local guide and anti-mafia activist Eduardo in Sicily's capital, Palermo. There are some people who have um, agglomerized the idea of, uh, yes. of, of, the, of the mafia and so we are here to discuss it and to, to demolish it. Dispel so, the myth. Exactly, yes. we dispel the myth, we give an example so that are uh, clear about what the mafia really is and uh, most of all we also want, want to people to learn about uh, what is the anti-mafia movement. It's, yes. it's not just uh, only Adio Pizzo or it's not right. something like recent. I mean, the, the anti-mafia movement uh, is basically basically as old as the mafia, you know? So yes. it's, uh, uh, each generation in Sicily, uh, they were in, in, during, uh, during the past years, there was always someone or a group of people who tried to do something, who uh, struggled against the mafia. Some of them uh, have been killed, of yeah. course. And so, yes, when we start from here, we just, uh, it, it's, uh, it's the beginning of the story. The Mafia, referred to by its own members as Cosa Nostra, standing for our thing, is a collection of criminal syndicates involved in racketeering, drug smuggling, and other organized crime activity across Italy, the United States, and the world. By 1865, the Mafia had accumulated enormous influence in Sicily, controlling much of its farms, ranches, and businesses. Okay, so where are we now, Eduardo? We are in Piazza della Memoria. Okay. Uh, it is uh, a memorial uh, dedicated to the prosecutor and judges uh, killed by the mafia mm -hmm. and this one is the courthouse so uh, this uh, space uh, I mean uh, you can read this you know the names of all the uh, people that has been killed in particular between the late 70s and uh, at the beginning of the 90s probably the most famous are Falcone and uh, Borsellino that have been killed uh, both uh, in 1992. It's estimated the mafia extorts more than 160 million euros every year from shops and businesses in the Palermo region. This is all mafia free, you know, this, yeah. the, whatever you will spend here, even a single euro will not go to the mafia. The fact that tourist shops that have this sticker, other tourists can come here and see this. And I guess it's a sign that it's safe for them to be here talking about these things and using these shops. And that's, I think it, it has a lot of power to it. Given that the mafia have murdered judges, police, prosecutors and others, this is a huge deal. And one that is now using the help of tourism with Adio Pizzo Travel and people like Eduardo here who run tours for tourists, helping raise funds for the movement, promoting the shops, restaurants and other businesses that are a part of it to tourists and teaching younger generations about how they can be part of the wave of progression and freedom here in Sicily. We came here to uncover why it is that Sicily appears time and time again on travel bucket lists. We've tasted its legendary seafood, sipped its delicious wines and had more than our fair share of limoncello. We've explored its ancient ruins and even climbed the craters of its volcano. Yet, in this moment of reflection, these are not what come to mind. I just can't stop thinking about the amazing resilience that this place has shown in the face of hardship. So, when you come here to enjoy its culinary delights, or inspiring ruins, or its volcanic adventures, remember that people by their very nature are survivors. And nowhere have I seen this more than here in Sicily and that it's the incredible tales of triumph and resolve behind these experiences that will add true value to your great Sicilian adventure.